Rachel Bloom. Yeah. What is your proudest moment as an actor? It's going to sound really, this is, this is going to sound so childish. Okay. But any time that I can like actually cry, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still kind of in that four or five year old notion where it's like, oh, I'm actually crying. Yeah. I'm really feeling. And, it's, um, it's very hard to do that on command. It really, it really is. Mm -hmm. And like, even though, you know, it's, 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 it's whatever, like you don't have to actually have tears streaming down your face. Yes. Like, I think in the pilot, when I like, actually, I was like, my character's having a nervous breakdown and mm -hmm. I'm crying. And then also um, in the eighth episode of my show, my character has a massive fight with her mother. Mm -hmm. And I really just started sobbing. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the editing room, we were like, yeah, we gotta tone back a little of the sobbing. That's not what it's really about. And I was like, but I was sobbing. Right. Like, right. this is my Meryl Street moment. When right. else are you gonna get me sobbing? Right, So exactly. it's so childish to be like, when I actually cried, but. And I get really, sometimes they'll offer you like, tears or something yeah, yeah. to put in your eyes and I'm like no like cuz you know Meryl Streep doesn't have Vaseline tears injected into her eyes you know what I mean maybe she does for all we know I don't I know. mean the other thing is there are certain that I've learned there there are certain like breathing tricks mm -hmm. like it's like it's like you know your breath pretending you're crying or mm -hmm. keeping your eyes open so there's certain yeah. like technical things um, but for whatever reason like I have to be in that emotional place and I get mm -hmm. so like it's just so masturbatory proud of myself. Like, oh totally. my God, I'm so, I'm feeling all the feelings right now. I'm such an actor. Like, I think some actors do that. And yeah. then I've noticed with some other actors, it's basically like a parlor trick. Yes. Like they can turn it on and off like a switch, just crying tears, the whole thing. What's your, what's, what's your crying? crying <sighs> I mean, I haven't had to cry that much um, on camera. Yeah. Um, on the new season of Difficult People that's coming out, it's kind of more of an emotional season for that the Billy character. Cool. Um, I just, I really wanted it to be very organic. I didn't want them giving me like tears or anything. I wanted to try to conjure it in the moment. Yeah. And I was kind of a purist like that. Of course, then like your best take is always the camera's not on you. Of course. You know, it's that oh, yes. sort of a thing. Yes. Um, and we do a lot of takes on that show because uh -huh. we improvise and you know, they want the show to look pretty and it does look very nice. Um, but you know, inevitably, I always feel like my best take, the camera was on someone else. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course, because the pressure's off. The pressure's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I've asked some even like more experienced actors that question if they experience that, and they say all the time. That's good to know. Yes, like, it's a relief. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's also good when you realize with some people, it's a technique or a parlor trick. Like it mm -hmm. makes it 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 definitely makes me feel better when I can't get to that because I'm not a huge crier. Like mm -hmm. just telling my eyes to make the water like that. Yeah. And so, I was talking to one of the people who runs sound on my show, and he was like, there's some actors that they can, they're not method-y, they can literally tell, them tell themselves yeah. a story and mm -hmm. be like, right now my character's feeling X, mm -hmm. and then they just do it. Mm -hmm. And that's just like, that's, I don't know if it's technique or talent or something, that's definitely like, yeah. I remember hearing an interview, I wish I remember which actress it was, but it was a great actress, like a great older actress who, who did a lot of theater. Um, it wasn't Blythe Danner, but it was someone like that. Yeah. And I remember them saying, you can't give yourself eight times a week live on Broadway emotionally every show because you will fall apart. Yes. So then someone said, well, then how do you do it? Because you're so great every time. And she said, you learn how to fake it really, really <laughs> well. That's yeah. what she said. And I thought that was a really honest and practical answer. It makes, but it, it, it yes, it makes sense. And I mean, I remember, I read an interview with, um, God, Amy, blah. she's in August, Osage County. Ryan. And, and even though like she wasn't feeling every night that her mm -hmm. father was dead, there's this scene where she finds that her father's dead and she screams, she was like, I wake up sometimes sore because no matter what I'm feeling, my body thinks it's been through a trauma because right. she's, she's screaming mm -hmm. at the top of her lungs. Mm -hmm. And that's so, it's interesting how much of like, how much emotion do you need to give? How much do you really need to be like, killing yourself emotionally, like give a good performance. And I mm -hmm. guess that's like the definition of technique. Yeah, because you need to turn it off in order to live your life. Right. You know, right. so, I mean, you'd think that I was talking about like Sophie's Choice. I'm on, you know, difficult people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But, um, uh, but even difficult people, like you want to be true to the character. You want to flesh it out. You want it to be three dimensional. And 
Yeah, and then sometimes you have to, and, and Difficult People, one of the great challenges is that we bounce around. The, the whole show is shot out of order completely. Yeah. We'll shoot five scenes from five different episodes in one day. Oh, it's cool. It's crazy. Interesting. Um, it's cool and also really challenging to track. So all the episodes are written beforehand and then you just Everything's film. written and then we film everything, but it can be very hard to track sort of emotionally where you are at any given moment. It's really hard. So yeah. then you really need to be able to turn it on and turn it off. What, Billy Eichner? Mm-hmm has been your proudest moment as an actor? My proudest moment as an actor, that's always hard to say. Um, recently, I guess, you know, um, going from Billy on the Street to Difficult People and kind of doing them at the same time, you know, when you, when you introduce yourself to the world as one persona, uh, especially when it's a very loud, larger than life <laughs> persona, which Billy on the Street is, it can be hard to sort of convince people that you are something else. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's been nice about Difficult People is that when it first came out, I don't know, I'm someone who reads all the reviews. Like, I just... I, I do the same thing. I just am. Of course. Maybe it's not healthy, but you just do. I think especially where, where maybe where we're at, we're kind of in a similar place. We're both you know? writer like, creators where it's like, you're, we're not just like, do they think, how do they think my body looks? Like, how do right. they think I said that line? It's, right. it's also from like, also, like, I don't know about you, but like, mm -hmm. I read the Onion AV Club, other, like, other of their, their other articles. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me, when I read about my show, it's mm -hmm. like, I want to geek out and, like, see how they analyze my show, like, how they analyze, like, Game right. of Thrones. Right, it's or interesting. Yeah. yeah, whether they're right or they're wrong. It's right. always kind of fascinating. And, um, but I was proud that, sort of, in the initial response to difficult people, people noticed that I, could be a real person. Yeah. Um, because Billy on the Street is so over the top, and right. that's like a performance. It's not acting traditionally, um, but difficult people is, you know, and I wanted to make sure people saw the difference there and that it was a three dimensional person and that I could have quieter moments and those could feel real to people. And I think people have responded well mm -hmm. um, in terms of that, and that I was happy about that. Oh my God, Martin Short. Gee, you're taller in person. I, I, very tall. Oh my God, yes, I'm Billy Epstein. How do you know who I am? I'm a huge fan of yours and you recognizing me is changing my entire night. Yeah, you were at Abraka Douglas's show. Were you just there? Yes. Now when you were on Parks and Rec, was mm -hmm. that, did they write that for you? I believe that they did, yeah. Yeah, and they, I think they were, Mike Schur and the writers of Parks and Rec were just big Billy on the Street fans. That's great. And um, Mike Schur actually DM'd me on Twitter and said, we have a part for you on Parks and Rec. That's and at the beginning, I think, I'm not sure if they always knew it was going to be a two season long thing. Because yeah. when they came to me, they said it was a couple of episodes. Um, and then it turned out to be two seasons. So that was pretty great. Um, but you know, even that was very much taking, and Mike would say this too, taking the Billy on the Street persona and adjusting it slightly and sort of moving it into this other environment. Yeah, it's kind of that middle ground between Billy on the Street and Difficult People, right? Yeah, I mean, Craig on Parks and Rec was just even crazier than Billy on the Street right. in, in some capacity. Right. It was a bit of a challenge to, because Parks and Rec, that ensemble of actors was so good. And I think that was a very, uh, like, elegantly performed show. Um, and all those actors were so good and so real and so down to earth that to come in with this very larger than life persona, that yeah. was a challenge too. It's like, how do I fit into this world? Do I fit into this world? Um, but yeah, it's all it great. I'm really just happy well. to be here. It was great. Bye. Oh. Bye letters to Josh. First draft, second drafts, in the trash. No. Yep. That's, that's no. insanity. No. Goodbye, Josh. Thong that I never wore. I don't wear thongs. Why did I even get this? You have finally lost it. You have left the reservation, and I, I can't, I'm not, I can't I watch care. it. You had a lot of success on the internet. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Um, how did that feel? How did you turn that into something more traditional? Well, the way that Aline Brush McKenna, my co-creator, found me was mm -hmm. through my internet videos. Mm -hmm. And the character I kind of play, even though they're like, it's like Billy on the Street. Like, it's not, it's, it's performance, not as much like, you know, reading lines right. and, and, and acting, acting, mm -hmm. but um, there's definitely this emotional core of anxiety and sadness and something is off. And so when we met, she was like, I want to create a musical show with you mm -hmm. that kind of has the emotional core of what you're doing mm -hmm. with these like musical sketches mm -hmm. in essence you're making. And so going on the show is, do, it's, it's really fun now because people say like, oh, the music 
numbers must be the hardest part, but the mm -hmm. music numbers, whenever we do it, it feels like I'm just on the internet again, except like right. I have a budget right. and I haven't been the one to go to Target and buy the costumes. Right. Isn't which, that great? Thank, which thank Such God, a good feeling. I'm, I was a bad line producer. Yeah, like, totally. Really bad. Did you produce? So, like, Billy yourself? on the Street luckily didn't have much production. Right. I'd have to go to Radio Shack and buy a mic. I hope this is a branded integration with Radio Shack, by the uh -huh. way. But um, we, I would just go by the cheapest mic we could find, and we would go to what's that uh, in New York? Um, the big electronics store. Oh, B and H. B and H. With all the orthodox Jews. With all the Jews. orthodox Jews, yep. like selling you a, a what electronics. What is that? Why is it owned by an orthodox Jew? I would imagine. Okay. I'd love if it wasn't and he just liked he just employ like, his employees have it's just to be like, Orthodox Jews. It's like Jews. some waspy guy from Connecticut yeah. who's just like, you Jew, you Maybe work it was there. just like, you know, uh, someone else who just doesn't want to work on a Saturday. You know, he needed an excuse. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you know, so yeah, we would go, we would go buy all our stuff. But I imagine Billy on the Street was very low-fi. Yeah. You know, we didn't need anything. Um, yeah, but, I have, yeah, I still like... Um, I mean, I also was on a college sketch group where it somehow fell on me, probably because I was like the girl and a little bit more organized to like mm -hmm. buy all the props. And like, there were just so, I'm not like a fashionista. I don't know right. how costumes work, but like it was my money and I didn't want to mm -hmm. pay a costume designer. So a lot of times I would just go, there was this video I did, You Can Touch My Boobies, which mm -hmm. is like sexy. And I just, I went to a store on Hollywood Boulevard for mm -hmm. strippers mm -hmm. and I was like, I just kind of bought a grab bag of like booty shorts and I was like, yeah. this looks like what people wear in music videos, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I just like got a lot of mesh and then like always went over budget, but it was okay because it was my own money. So mm -hmm. I would just be broke and mm -hmm. um, you know, my yeah. boyfriend would have to pay for my rent. Totally. Um, but like, that's what's cool about doing the music numbers now is like, I can like, I can have these ideas for like props and costumes mm -hmm. and I don't have to go to the store to get them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still like really grateful to just show up on set and have it be amazing and yeah. be there. Yeah. But the musical numbers really feel back to what, like back to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So it, they don't feel like hard per se. It feels mm -hmm. like that's my wheelhouse, that's my sweet spot. So it's been really fun to take those skills and like make them part of a plot of a TV show. Right. We both come from sketch comedy. We mm -hmm. both came from kind of doing it ourselves mm -hmm. and like just begging people to notice. Mm -hmm. How how do you feel with like the newfound like fame and attention and like just all of the fans like how mm -hmm. how, are, how are you holding up i'm fine with it yeah no problem yeah um you know like we said when you work so hard for so long you know in hindsight i'm glad i didn't get successful i had an early almost brush with success at like 25 26 mm -hmm. um and but then it nothing really happened and then things got quiet again for mm -hmm. a few years and i just had to keep like plugging away, you know, and when you do that and you finally, thankfully, land at a place where you are successful, um, it, everything feels fine. Like, yeah. I'm extremely busy, but you're also, you have a great perspective, is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. I'm glad I got, I got successful as an adult rather than a child or, like, right after college, because I think that can be very hard to navigate, no matter how smart you are. Sure. So I'm glad that things started to really happen for me in my mid-30s when I could appreciate it, when I had paid some dues, and when I wasn't an idiot. Sure. I mean, I'm still an idiot, yeah. but not totally naive. Um, so but that... you know more about, like, how to do taxes. Oh, no, I pay someone to do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and so, yeah, you know, of course, fans are good. And, uh, you know, I'm a big social media guy. I love interacting with people. That's been a huge help for me. Mm -hmm. um, I always say I don't think I would have a career without Facebook and Twitter because that's how people shared my videos. Yeah. And that's how I got the attention of people in the industry who I think always liked me but were a little scared. Didn't, didn't know where I fit in. Uh -huh. So it was very helpful to say, like, here's where I fit in. 500,000 people just watched my video, and all these people are from all over the country and all over the world. It's not my little niche in New York, so how are you going to tell me I'm not valid? Um, so, you know, I don't overthink the fan part of it. Obviously, I'm, I'm great. I love that part of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I so much of what you said, like, rang through, like, that's what I feel like writing and creating your own work really frees up is like mm -hmm. you're not just trying to fit in the boxes or fit in the role that someone else is writing, especially mm -hmm. like when you're a type that like isn't necessarily like, I mean, especially we both come from musical theater. Like We have an interesting, weird parallel background of coming from and loving musical theater, 
but getting to TV through comedy. Yes, a hundred percent. I got them heavy boobs, heavy boobs. Don't ever forget that these heavy boobs, heavy boobs are just sacks of yellow fat, like the stuffing of a couch. They're just sacks of yellow fat, technically meant to feed a baby. They're just sacks of yellow fat. Well, musical theater, because like you either have ingenue and then you have like brassy best best friend, and right. like, and and I guess like I would be more like. Brassy best mm -hmm. friend, but like also well, when you're doing this. Brassy best friend. Yeah, hey. That, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like half the shows in the Golden Age of Broadway are like someone doing this. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and but also feeling, I part of what led me to write was the frustration of like I can't find a decent comedy audition song mm -hmm. that like really fits who I am and what mm -hmm. I want to say. Like that wasn't written before like 1962, mm -hmm. um, where all the jokes are about like. Rolodexes, right, and right, right. Or you're, like, you're like a woman at home. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And so I think that like that frustration with like musical theater not giving me the f like what I wanted mm -hmm. like drove me to create my own material. Yeah, Does that sure. ring true for you? Yeah. Well, it's it's the world not giving you what you want. You know, sure. I, I could name like ten parts in musicals. You know, uh, uh, that I would play. Sure. But I agree with you in that I'm not like a cookie cutter type. You know, I was never the sort of traditional leading man. But at the same time, I wasn't like 400 pounds. Right. You know, right. like I was like a character guy, but like, what do you do with that when you're in your 20s? Um, and so you write, you write yourself into working, basically. Like right. you, you, you show people what you are. You create your own type, essentially. And then you have to work your way out of that type to do other things, <laughs> which is where I'm at right now. But, but you gotta get in there somehow. Yeah. And so, yeah, you have to write your way into the industry a lot of the times if you're someone like us or Julie Klausner who's on Difficult People with me yes. and, you know, but, but I also think we're in an age where a lot of people are doing that, where that's actually becoming more the norm than not. People it feels like very, Louis yes. and, yeah. It feels very encouraged. Like people are like, how did you think of creating your own work? And like, we both come out of Upright Citizen Brigade Theater right. in New York and it's like, mm -hmm. that's just what everyone did. Right. Like yeah. it's just everyone around me was doing that and so it just, it was like, that's what I have to do mm -hmm. is create my own, yeah, create my own thing and create yeah. my own persona. Yeah. There is nothing sexy about depression, Rebecca. Listen, you better get your act together, young lady, or you're gonna run this new life off in the ditch. How did you get in here? Well, your depressed mind invited me in. It's early April now. A year ago, mm -hmm. I thought Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was dead. Um, cause we made the pilot and mm -hmm. then everyone passed on it mm -hmm. and I was broke mm -hmm. cause I paid for my own wedding. Um, mm -hmm. and I went back to writing Robot Chicken part time and then it all happened really quickly. So this last year has been really insane. And I think it feels the same way. I mean, I, my first video, video went viral kind of like right out of college, but then it was like a very slow, I was a working TV writer mm -hmm. making music videos that like to varying degrees of success and producing mm -hmm. all of them and paying for them myself. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like every single view I got on any video I did on the internet, I felt the work behind that view. It's like, oh, I got this 10 views here because mm -hmm. I emailed this website and I got these 20 because mm -hmm. of this. And so it like really felt like, mm -hmm. whew, like every single like YouTube mm -hmm. like view or like was like a little bead of like sweat mm -hmm. and my bank account going back to zero. Mm -hmm. And the past year just, it, it's what you were saying, like to get all, to get like it, my work like formally noticed and mm -hmm. especially something I was so proud of because I knew Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was good and I really mourned it. I thought it was, I thought it was dead and I was like, mm -hmm. well, God, where do I go now as a musical comedian? Because this was the perfect integration of what I was doing with, with musical sketch, but also mm -hmm. musical theater, like making it come out of character and mm -hmm. point of view. And so, because like I almost lost it, I'm now mm -hmm. so much more grateful. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know, the, the, the tension and like all of the praise has not gotten old. Whenever people come up to me and say they watch the show, it makes my day, mm -hmm. it makes me so happy. And then like, I think that's with like winning the Golden Globe, like that's, I mean, it's awesome. And that's partially why it felt so good was like, it, it's almost something I didn't have. And the likelihood of me having the show at all, mm -hmm. especially on broadcast television is so, yeah. Is so weird and like so unlikely. So to like mm -hmm. be at this fancy schmancy award show mm -hmm. 
where I get to stand up and like hold this like very, it's literally made of like marble, like mm -hmm. formal thing being like, you've done well, mm -hmm. you did right. It, 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 it's very, it's very gratifying to just fully create something, fully birth something, co-birth something, and receive like a pat on the back, like that you've always wanted to mm -hmm. receive. Yeah, I love marble. I love marble. Fantastic. And now my whole house is just marble. Yeah, I can't get enough marble. Yeah. Have you had any uh, like strange fan encounters? Strange fan encounters, well I do shoot on the street. Sure. Uh, so I'm constantly surrounded by people and it's not really that hard to get to me. Yep. Um, which is great because I need that in order for the show, Billy on the Street, to keep happening. Yeah. Um, and I think with difficult people now, you know, it's interesting to have, there's no like graceful way of saying this, but I have two shows on at once. And that's very unusual. And now there's people, you know, there are people who love Billy on the Street who don't necessarily watch difficult people. There's people who love, dif who, people who love difficult people who don't necessarily watch Billy on the Street for whatever reason, there's some crossover. But, um, so that's a lot of people mm -hmm. um, watching you. But I, what, I, what I'm happy about is that in New York, people are very savvy. So when I'm shooting Billy on the Street, I think they know to kind of not get in my way. Ironic because I'm always getting in people's right, way right. and that's the show, but they know kind of not to disturb the production too much because huh. we're filming and it's a TV show. Sometimes people try to get on the show, um, but I don't really want people on Billy on the Street who clearly know who I am. Uh -huh. So if people come up to me, I'm pretty good at, even if they're trying to pass as someone who doesn't know, I'm very good at looking in their eyes and reading like whether they know me or not and we'll sort of have a polite exchange, but they won't be on the show because the whole thing is that you need a spontaneous reaction from sure. someone. Um, but nothing's been too crazy. Some, one person did jump, like, when I'm shooting Billy on the street, like I said, you can get to me, and they like jumped and they like kissed me without like any warning whatsoever. And like it on was, the lips? Like on the cheek, but it's like, I'm not Harry Styles. You know, <laughs> like that's like not happening to me very often, yeah. off camera even. And so, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it, that was very strange. And then I, I did think because of that, wow, I understand the challenges of being like Justin Bieber. Like I can't imagine like that interaction times nine billion yeah. all day, every day, and not comparing myself to Justin Bieber in any way. But like you get a little taste of that and you're like, wow, people who are really, really famous, like although they, sh you know, you don't want famous people to complain about being famous, but when you, when you really experience a little of it, you realize how crazy it can be. Sure. Um, although I myself, you know, that's as crazy as it's gotten for me. Excuse me, I have theater tickets. I'm seeing a matinee. Oh, Jesus! That's gonna be a great photo. Take a picture of a cab. Why don't you watch where you're going? Which way is the farmer's market? What more do you f***ing want from me? Oh, you idiot! My God, you're a grown man on a bike! My show, you know, my character is very anxious and depressed, and mm -hmm. it's like based on my own history with that, and. Mm -hmm. On Facebook pages, you know, anyone can message you, mm -hmm. which I love. Right. And I get messages every day from people being like, I suffer from depression, or like, I was, um, uh, I'm, I'm bipolar, mm -hmm. like, I'm, and, and your show has really helped me mm -hmm. accept sure. this and that about myself. And like, people just like pouring out like very personal stories, like over Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger. And yeah. like, it's been really cool to get that direct, unfiltered interaction. Like, it's not people going through, like, PR. It's mm -hmm. just, like, people being like, hey. And, and like, you think it would be creepy, but most of the messages I get are, like, actually very sincere. Yeah. And um, it's been really great to, like, just people pouring out there. Because when they see you on a show, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I know you. I know this person. Especially mm -hmm. on a show like mine where the character is a lot like me. I mm -hmm. created the show. It's very personal. Mm -hmm. And that's been really wonderful to mm -hmm. like feel like this, you know, it's like our people, people are fans of the show. You get tweets and stuff, but like to really feel that direct personal connection that like I have directly affected someone's life in mm -hmm. this writer's room in North Hollywood right. is like, it's so cool. Yeah, it's so strange. You're right. And social media really gives people an outlet. It's a very direct exchange, yeah. and I read almost everything. I mean, I check Twitter for everything bad and good that anyone says about me, yeah. which is good, because it helps you, A, know who's watching. It, you, it's good to hear from the, the people who love 
your, your work because it encourages you. Um, and it's good to hear from the people who hate your work, mm -hmm. I think, because A, I think it's hilarious. Uh -huh. um, and, and B, it kind of, you need a thick skin. Yes. There's no way of, of, of navigating through what we do uh, without a thick skin. And so, and you need people to help give you a thick skin if it's all praise all the time. I mean, I pity Meryl. I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, but, so sensitive. Um, what's great about the internet is that even Meryl Streep has people writing bad things about her once in a while, which I think is just profoundly hilarious. What's the worst thing that someone said like about you or to you on the internet? Because I'm because it mine is like burned oh, into my brain. The list is long. <laughs> it's like it's a very long list. It's yeah. like Angie's list. It's it's just <laughs> extremely long. Um, what's the worst thing anyone says? I think because on. Billy on the Street and Difficult People, although to a lesser extent on Difficult People, but with Billy on the Street, again, it's a very loud, extreme character. You are going, the people who love it, love it. Mm -hmm. And they're obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. um, the people who hate it, you know, I think in ex any extreme character is gonna generate extreme responses. Sure. And Parks and Rec too, I was a very loud person coming into what was known as a very kind of elegant, um, quiet by network broadcast sitcom standards show, a very sophisticated show, and I came in, and that's the character that was, you know, written uh, just all guns blazing mm -hmm. in a very different style from what people who were watching that show were accustomed to, and some people thought it was a great breath of fresh air, and some people said, who the hell is this guy? You know, this doesn't belong here, this is not the show that we got used to, and you know, we don't want to wrap our heads around this. Um, and so, I've gotten a ton, I get so many extreme responses. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I, I, it makes sense to me to get an extreme response yeah. for what I do. Yeah. Um, because it's not for everybody. And I don't think, I don't, I don't wanna do, I think a, any type of comedy that's for everybody is crap. Sure. I mean, what, is, what comedy is for everybody? Right. You know, it's, by its nature, it should not be for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of take the good with the bad. See, it's funny, I constantly, I struggle with it because I'm really sensitive, mm -hmm. I am a people pleaser, I want everyone to like me, but at the same yeah. time, I know I'm making like a divisive weird show. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, and I also like, it's like, oh, like I don't care about the establishment, whatever, I'm like proud of myself, but at the same time, like, I am sensitive, like, and, mm -hmm. and I've developed, my, my skin has gotten thicker and thicker and mm -hmm. thicker, but like, I, I still let myself like be affected by people, and mm -hmm. when the show premiered, I'll never forget someone tweeted. And now you can mute things on Twitter, which is awesome, because mm -hmm. it's not like you're giving them the attention of blocking, but you just can literally forget it ever happened. Right, right, right. But like someone, the day the pilot premiered, was like um, tweeting at me the whole time. Was like, ugh, like you're using your position of privilege to just like make this showboat, show offy character for yourself. It's disgusting. And then they wrote in all caps. You can't act. Wow. And that was the day the show premiered. And I didn't have like a ton of Twitter, I mean I had like some, but mm -hmm. like, so like, you know, it, it, and it was like, it really hurt my feelings. Yeah. It really hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. And like, I muted them, but like it messed with my head mm -hmm. for a couple days. And so it's been, it, it, it's, it's a challenge to, just because of the type of person I am, I wanna be myself, but I also secretly hope that everyone will like that. Right. And I'm still getting used to the idea not everyone will like me. Mm -hmm. And I know that's such a childish thing to say. No, it's like a human thing it's to say. It's such a human, like, you just, only you, everyone child. Everyone wants everyone to love them. Yeah. I mean, actors partially like acting because it feels like a lot of people might love you at once. Right.